Three ways to read the word of God. Number one, don't read to gain. Read to know God only. Read to learn the stories. Don't read to solve problems. Read as a friend. When your friend writes a letter to you or sends you a text message, is it not we love you or reading it? Are you reading it with any, you know, unnecessary seriousness? You know, this came out of my conversation with God one time. I was finding it difficult to actually read the word of God and whatever. And God said, it's because you are reading it as an adult. You are trying to read my word as an adult. You are trying to get revelation out of my word. You are trying to get, say, when I read, life comes to me. When I read, this, no, that's the one you see. Matthew chapter 18, verse 3, the Bible says, except you are comforted and be like little children, you will not enter into Rema. You will not enter into the kingdom of God. Answer and Ebenezer never ask us, I want to read, I want to understand, I want to bind the devil. No, every night when they want to sleep or anytime they want to sleep, say, can you read us stories? What they are interested in is stories. And Jesus said, be converted and be like them. Read for stories. When you, want, when you wake up in the morning, you want to read the story about how Jesus fed you. Read the stories. Don't forget about the, the power. Leave God with the power. Jesus told them before he turned uh, water to wine. He said, just pour water. He didn't say pour wine. He said, he, he said go get something. We're going to ferment wine. He said, pour water and leave. He said, pour water, leave. So they pour water. After some time, I said, okay, take the water to people. He didn't say take the wine. He said, take the water. When they now tasted it, it became wine. Who made it? The process of fermentation is Jesus. Just read the story. Wake up in the morning. You know, relish, I mean, uh, uh, revel in the stories. Just read it as a story. Very simple. Like a child. I remember what got me converted as a young Muslim was the stories of, were the stories of uh, Jesus, uh, Joseph, and Mary. Joseph the carpenter. Mary the virgin. Jesus the Savior. And then stories of uh, Noah's water. They don't those stories. They just became something that held on to my soul. That I could not push them off until I became saved. Don't read it like, that I want to read the word of God. I want to really understand some few things. Please. It is what he reveals that we discover. And you must go as a child. Read one chapter. At a time, as a child, don't say, I'm trying to read 79 chapters. I want to really know something. I want to have this, that. No, 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 don't, 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 don't braggadociously read. Don't come and tell us I've finished the Bible uh, three times a year. We don't want to know. Can you just read the stories? You will so, be so surprised the day you meet Peter that Peter was simpler than you. They were just reading the word of God. Story. All the things you are reading from them now, they were just talking it as somebody was running through story. And you are taking it very seriously. When Peter said, and the Ariaropagos, Paul said, you are talking to the God of Noah. Ah, ah, ah. And you are making so much noise and you are exerting so much power. That's why you went to read it in the morning. You are disappointed already because you don't know whether you get revelation. Or God didn't want you to read it for revelation. He wants you to just know the stories as a friend. Number two. Don't go a day without reading it three times with intention, at least. David said in Psalm 55, verses 16 to 17, that he will go into the temple of God three times a day. Apart from the present time. Find a way that in the morning, in the afternoon, in the night, you don't, don't start your day without reading it religiously, just to get one story or the other. One story after another, one story after another, one story after another. One day, you just come across an issue. You won't know when the story flies out of your mouth. It is written. Even in your thought, it is written. Even in your action, it is written. But some people have become born again in seven years. 
and they have taken in so sparingly the word of God. They have so much of emotions. Emotions have built up 90% of their life and the word of God is 10%. How can the word of God win when it is 9% against 90% of emotions? Flesh has taken over so much the things they do, how they interpret things. I see pastor's daughters getting married and all the breasts are out of a pastor's daughter. So you'll be wondering, what did he teach them? You can't have me there. I will disappear before they start. If they don't, if they don't stop the way, even if I'm the one signing the register, you can never see me there. You like to stand up? You can never see me there. Because I know that the breast will not do anything to anybody around the world. Than to inside the flesh. Find a way of making sure that it gets into you three times a day. Whether through Bible app, through reading. Or, I like the way Mirella reads. Especially the Bible. I like the way Mirella reads. Well, I'll be talking with people and she just go quiet on me. Then I want to see what she's doing on her phone. She's actually reading without anybody knowing. She's just reading. I say, ah, you just enjoy the word of God. I am sure if she read more than five times a day. She just be reading it on phone. She has put it on her own phone. She's just reading. Do you understand what I'm saying? Make sure that at least he enters to you. Uh, Job was saying that I've exalted your word more than my necessary portion. And you know that people, human beings eat at least three times a day. Make sure that at three times, because there are three seasons in a day. That is the morning, that is the afternoon, that is the evening time. Make sure you don't sleep without the word of God inside you. Even if it's just, you are getting tired. Play Bible on tape. Let it be plain to you. All right? And number three, don't let your prayers or listening to others be more than your time with God's word. Some of us, everything that is coming out of our mouth is what T.D. Jake said, what your pastor said, what Selma said, what Belie said. Now, I want to know what does the word of God say. A lot of the time when I engage people, I said, you are talking about these things. What, on what Bible verses are you basing them? People are not able to bring out Bible verses, but they are able to bring out what Paula White said. I'm not interested in what Paula White said. I'm not even interested in what Pastor David said, except there is a basis of the word of God in what they said. You say, ah, Pastor David said so, 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 and so, and according to the word of God, this word, that's what they were always saying in the Bible. They say Jesus did this so and so, and it confirms what the psalmist said. Or it confirms what the prophet said. Because the Bible says in Proverbs 28, verse 9, anybody who turns deaf ear to the law, even his prayers are there an abomination. Don't let your time of prayers be more than your time of studying the word. Some of you pray seven hours in prayer. What are you saying? And you've never spent 30 minutes on solid word. I'm not talking about the tape of Bishop Wale, okay, or tape of Bishop Wale, what they are saying. They are talking based on what they have heard. What have you read in the Bible? Which everybody has. That is what the Bible says and in Colossians 3, 16. Let the word of Christ dwell richly in you in all wisdom. Teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms. That means when you are teaching and admonishing each other, when you are talking, let it be in Psalms, in hymns, in spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart. To the, in your heart you are singing with grace. When you are teaching and admonishing each other, it's based on the word of God. You are, when you are singing, the singing is based on God's word, not as a corpse. They say some things in their, in their singing that don't have any reckoning with the word of God. That are not word based. And because it's full of emotion, and you're feeling emotion also, you sing it also. And it doesn't have any meaning. The devil does not even have respect for it. Don't forget, it's only the word of God that handles the devil. He understands every other thing that he created. Only the word of God, he does not understand. 